Hi everyone, I'm Kodesha. Today we're going to be talking about the LEGO Mindstorms 51515 Robot Inventor Set. We're going to start with the box and contents. This is the box. You've seen this box uh, probably all over the internet by now. It's got a picture of the five uh, robots uh, in the front and uh, very clear instruction to download the app. Without the app, you can't do much. The app is available for the Mac, for Windows, uh, for iOS, for Android, and for uh, Fire OS devices. First thing that struck me was that there's a huge number of parts in the box, and the uh, insides of the box are printed with what looks like sorting guides. Here you can see uh, I've arranged the parts uh, according to the sorting guides. Um, if you look at the lower left side, you'll see like uh, six of the big wheels, uh, one large turntable, two smaller turntables, the differential that comes with the 42109 Technic set. On the upper left, you'll see two of the large uh, Land Rover fenders. You'll also see a nice variety of uh, panels uh, together with uh, a plate that you can use to build on. Um, there's a huge number of uh, L-shaped double angle beams, small L-shaped beams. Uh, you've got the biscuit parts, you've got the H-shaped uh, connectors, and you've got the electronic components. Yeah, the remaining parts, yeah, for instance, uh, again, I'm struck by the number of parts uh, that comes with this set. Uh, there's a huge number of pins, uh, 2L and 3L, friction and frictionless. You've also got those grey 3L pins with a half axle on them. Um, you've got a nice uh, bunch of axles, you've got uh, 5 by 7 frames and uh, two sizes of the larger frames. You've got plenty of beams and you've got an uh, astounding array of connectors. So all in all, you, for parts alone, um, I, I feel that you're really getting a lot. This is the user manual, it just basically says please download the app. The rest of it is regulatory information and you've also got a small sticker sheet. Let's spend some time talking about the electronic components. Um, the hub looks very much like the Spark Prime hub, other than color. It's the same size, the same shape, I feel like it's the same weight. Uh, you do notice a difference when you turn it on because it shows a play icon instead of a heart shaped icon. Other than that, I, I can't really see any difference between this and the spike brick. You get four uh, media motors. Uh, you got one ultrasonic sensor. Uh, you've got one color sensor. Um, you don't get a touch sensor in this set, but you can program the color sensor to detect red. Then when you touch your finger to it, it will be as though uh, you have touched it, uh, like you would a regular touch sensor. And I would just like to point out that the brick has uh, an accelerometer and a gyro built in. So you can uh, even smack the brick and it will register a, a touch. Uh, you will see that in a minute. When you plug the brick in uh, to your computer, it will start. Then uh, uh, once you've downloaded the app, you can get started on building the robots. The robot that we're going to start with is uh, Charlie. So here uh, you can see the app is launched. And then uh, you click on the first uh, uh, mission. So this is cool because you actually have a video to show you what you're building. Then you are building, uh, when you build a robot, one of the things I wish they did was allow you to use keyboard keys to navigate, but no, you're just going to have to press the buttons to go to each step of the building instructions. Uh, now uh, it's asking you to connect the brick. So give me a minute while the video catches up. Okay, so now when the brick is connected, it turns on and the app is going to uh, inform you that the update is available so you'll start updating the firmware I'm not sure how long it's going to take exactly I think for me it took about 10 minutes so now the app has updated we can go on go to the next step And you can see the program on the left side of the screen here. You can see it's very similar to Scratch. And to run the program, you just click on the play button on the lower right. 
So this is uh, Charlie's uh, silly expression. One of the things I didn't realize is that the intensity of the LEDs can be varied. So it's not just a turn on, turn off, uh, but you can actually make them glow uh, lighter or darker. Uh, this is the standard expression with the blinking. It does make it look very lively. And uh, this is the last uh, expression. You can actually create more expressions using the animation editor. This is the happy expression. Right, let's get started with the next mission. So for this mission, you are going to build uh, his legs or his wheels. Right, um, again, we go through the building instructions. We're just going to go through them real quick. So one thing you do notice is that the builds are relatively brief. There are not a lot of steps to this build. But I would like to point out that um, this build um, is not really for novice technique builders. Now on the screen that I've highlighted here, you need to make sure that the gears are aligned precisely so that the 2L beam is pointing straight down. It has to be absolutely dead on square. And then in the other highlight in the instructions, you'll see that the dots on the motor hub, for want of a better word, the part that rotates, the dot on that must align to the uh, circle on the casing itself. And uh, the neck uh, gear has to be absolutely aligned as shown uh, in the instructions. And this is really difficult to do um, for novice builders. I think uh, novice builders are going to have a problem with this. Um, and one more thing to point out is that um, you can't actually make it exactly uh, straight. It will either be a little to the left or a little to the right, depending uh, on the way the gears are engaged. But um, it's a small problem. So this is the program uh, to make him rotate. You can see it's very straightforward. It should be easy for kids to program. And this is what it looks like. Now let's move on to the third mission, uh, building his arms. So once again, uh, here are the building instructions. And you run the program. This is what the program looks like. And uh, here's where you can see the uh, accelerometer on the hub come into play. Because when you run the program, first it does the calibration. Then you have to smack it. Really smack it. Then it wakes up. It's kind of cool. So this does open all kinds of possibilities that uh, is not uh, possible in the earlier Mindstorms set. The final mission is to build that little flap that he has uh, in the front of his body. Right? Um, the building instructions for that is really simple, so I thought I'd better just skip it. Now here is the program. It's a fairly complicated program. And uh, this is what that program looks like running on the robot. Calibration, as usual. So I think the name Charlie is actually inspired by Wally uh, because he kind of looks and reminds me of Wally. The other thing which I like to point out is uh, 
you need to have a proper surface uh, to play uh, with Charlie. I noticed that when it was on parquet in my house, it didn't want to turn properly, but once I put it on this bamboo rug, it works fine. Now, I have tried building a Spike Prime version of Charlie, and I found that I could flash the Spike Prime brick using the Robot Inventor app. Then I can run the same program. Uh, I did have to tweak it a little bit because I was using the medium motors uh, and the large motors that came with the expansion set together for the Spike Prime bot. But as you can see, Yep, it works pretty well. So now let's take a look at the next robot, which is called Blast. Uh, every previous version of the Mindstorm set had a humanoid robot. And this is uh, the version that comes with the robot inventor. That is very reminiscent of the Cylon. I also like uh, this particular set of building instructions because they actually build a stand for you to put the robot in. Right. It's like you're assembling a real world robot. So once again, you have to connect the brick. Uh, we're just going to skip that part. I'm just going to look at the program. So once again, the program is very straightforward. Just place an animation. And this is what the program looks like. Now the next part is very interesting because you're going to build Blast's body and uh, the, the really cool feature is the use of the differential. So let's just uh, tap through the building instructions. Yeah, I just want to stop the building instructions right here. Right. This is the point where you need to be very careful because if it's not aligned, the robot probably won't work properly. And this is where I found it's useful to just stick a pin, uh, either a 3L a pin or a pin with stop here and here uh, to make it uh, easier to put the differential in without moving the arms out of position. Okay, now let's take a look at the program. This is how the robot looks like. And there's a really cool detail. You can actually uh, open the hatch to see the mechanism. So let's have a closer look. So that is really nice. Now I move on to the next activity, which is a building blast sound. One thing which I noticed is that uh, you don't have a lot of parts in this step. It's, it's just very economical in the use of parts, but you do get some very convincing arms. And uh, it's nice the way the color sensor and the ultrasonic sensor are integrated into one arm and the motor is integrated into the other. And you can just move the arm to use one or the other sensor. So that's kind of cool. So this is the program. And this is what this, uh, the program running looks like. Basically, you get a chance to give uh, Blast a high five. So, calibration to start with. High five. He does sound kind of evil when you come to think of it. Finally, uh, you're going to be building Blast's uh, wheels and legs.
now it just occurred to me that uh, each step is discrete. You could actually uh, make BLAST a group activity. Uh, each uh, member of the team could build one part, one person could build the head, one person could build the body, one person could build the arms, and one person could build the legs. It's very modular in its design, and, and then you can put everything together. This is the program, and this is BLAST running the program. So once again, calibration to start off with. Once again, I just want to point out, uh, you have to uh, test on a number of different surfaces because there are some surfaces that probably work better than others where these wheels are concerned. Now let's take a look at Jello. Uh, Jello is the robot dog, kind of like a Boston Dynamics dog. So a quick look at the building instructions. I'm pretty sure that this is like the most popular robot or the one that most people are most curious about because the walking mechanism is absolutely beautiful in my mind. Now fun thing here, uh, you don't actually program the robot once it's built. Uh, you use the built-in test program. This is what it looks like. So press the middle button. You can see the four motors are highlighted. When I press the right button, it goes faster. Then when I press the left button, it goes slower. And it goes eventually in the opposite direction. Now you're going to build the rest of it. Right, so this is the program. And for some reason, I couldn't get Jello to walk properly uh, with this program. So I did my own, which looks like this. And this program makes him walk fine. So this is pretty much the end of my presentation. Uh, this is as far as I've gotten. And uh, some personal thoughts now. Um, quite frankly, I really like this set. It's not the EV3 set, but I think it's good that it's not the EV3 set. I mean, I still have my EV3 set if I want to do EV3 stuff. It's one thing which is, is hard to convey is, is just it feels fun. You feel really interested in the builds. You know, EV3 gives you that kind of serious vibe, but this is really silly and playful and fun. And I really like that. So... Maybe the next time I'll do another video uh, showing the remaining two robots, uh, MVP and uh, Tricky. And uh, maybe if you have any questions, uh, you can let me know and then uh, I will address them in the next video. So thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe and uh, take care.